notes for you. Um, this session is called The Power of Pause. So is everyone in the right place? Awesome. All right. So I love to start off with my journey and telling you my story, and then we're going to hop right into what um, the message is about today, which is all about self-care. And so at the age of 15, my mother abandoned me. And for 17 years of my life, I was stuck. And I did not realize I was stuck until I started going to therapy, and I was reflecting back over my life, and I'm like, wow, I'm 32 now, and it's been 17 years that I've been carrying this hurt and this pain. And my mother physically abandoned me when I was 15, but emotionally she had checked out long before that, and now I know it's due to a mental illness. However, at the time I had no idea. And so if you were to see me, I look just like this. I was wearing a mask, right? So I had the husband, I had the kids, I was on ministry at the time at the church. I had a house, I had a job, all the stuff that they say should make you happy and make you feel fulfilled. But instead, I felt very, very empty inside. And so I would come to church on Sundays and I would hear the awesome, amazing, amazing word from Pastor Vernon. And then I would leave church and pull my car over weeping because I was carrying so much pain at that time that I had no idea how to even identify or what that was. And I got to a point where I couldn't take it anymore. And how I knew that is because I kept thinking that because my mother abandoned me, my father abandoned me, that every person close to me was going to walk away too. And I just had all of these crazy thoughts like running through my head. And so I got to a point where I'm like, I cannot live like this any longer. And so I made a decision to go to therapy. And I'm very intentional about talking about therapy because I don't Morning. think we talk about it enough yes. in our culture. Yes, indeed. And I took a session here. I first started with grief recovery well. here at the Word Church. And then afterwards, I ended up taking a group. It was group counseling called Healing the Mother Wounds. And I was in therapy for four months, and when I tell y'all, it was the best decision that I could have ever made for myself. And I remember I went in there with an intention in mind that I am yes, coming I'm one way, today. but I have to so leave very, very different because of how I wanted my life to look. And my daughter was small at the time, and I remember every time she would ask me questions about my mother, I would tear up and cry or I couldn't say anything because my grandmother raised me and no one ever talked about dealing with that pain. And so I just carried it for 17 years of my life. And I'm not, I know I'm not alone because there's many people that deal with childhood issues and they just suppress them year after year after year. And until it's brought to surface, you don't even realize that you're dealing with it. And so when I'm in the healing the mother wounds, every week I went through very intentional about what I needed to receive from this course or this class and one thing it was very good that every woman in there was dealing with mother issues so now I no longer felt like I was alone and on the last day of the session I remember the facilitator she was walking around the room and she was asking each woman um, what did she um, what did she say she said how do you feel so I'm watching her go around the room and I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna say when she gets to me I have no idea so she gets to me and she stands right in front of me just like this. And she started looking me in my eyes. And she was like, um, how do you feel? And I was like, I don't know. And so she started hugging me and pressing certain points of my back. To this day, I still don't know why. And every woman in that room started praying for me, including her. And um, at that moment, the 15-year-old girl that had been abandoned by her mother had died. And the 32-year-old woman that I was at the time, she had been birthed. And when I tell you guys, I felt so free, I felt so liberated, I felt like I was finally seen, and that everything that I had been carrying for that period of time, it was now gone. But it was just the beginning of my journey because I'm in therapy right, at, at right now because there's still things I have to continue to work through. And what I realized, and I remember Pastor Vernon preaching this years ago, like there's some things that's going to happen in your life and there'll be that thorn in your side that you're always going to have to, it's just going to be there. And it's going to remind you, which is good for me based on everything that I'm doing. So I never, so I always remain humble. And so after that set, after the four months of therapy, my life drastically changed. And I ended up the following, so that was in 2012. In 2013, 
I found out in August that I was losing my job and they were closing the site permanently. And I remember I got the news the day that I was off work, <laughs> um, registering my son for kindergarten. And the director had to call and tell me because he didn't want someone else to tell me when I got to work, so he wanted me to be prepared. And so I'm sitting in my car and I get the call and he said, you know, as of October 2013, the site will be closed. And I'm sitting in my car and I heard so clearly in my spirit, it was so clear, like this is your opportunity to take a chance on yourself. And I have never looked back from that moment. And I have been going full force with, and I'll talk about Be Free Project and everything that I do, um, but from that moment, like I heard God, I listened to God, I acted on it, and I've been doing the self-work ever since. And so my journey started, I would say, back in 2012, and every day I've been intentional about showing up, not just for myself, but for, my, for God, for my family, because my children need to see me healthy. They need to see mommy okay. And I am very, I don't, there's generational curses that you can pass down to your children. And you can say in your, you can say like, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do this to my children, but it will come out. And I know it to be true because it happened to me. And when I noticed it, I'm like, oh, I don't like that. That looked like mother issues. And so I chose to show up and I chose to do something about it. So every time I get an opportunity to speak, I'm going to talk about therapy, and then I'm going to challenge every single woman that hears my voice this, the next couple of days to not just come here to get this emotional experience and spiritually fed, but what are you going to do as a result of it, right? You took off work. You invested money into this. I want you to think about, okay, this is an amazing experience that I'm partaking in, and as a result of this, I'm going to connect with another woman here, and I'm going to leave here, and I'm going to learn how to show up for myself, all right? So what, the things that you're going to learn today is what is self-care and why is it important? Why it's okay to put you first minus the guilt and how to practice self-care even in your busy life. So everyone should have received a sheet that said notes at the top and then you also should have received a sheet that has a list of um, self-care practices that you can take home and start to apply them to your life. I created both of those for you guys. So I want you to get your pens out I'm going to share a lot of information. If you can't write that fast, make sure you snap a picture of the screen so that way you're not missing this and then you can be able to use it later, okay? And then we'll have time at the end for Q&A because that's important if you have questions for me. Oh, and so let me tell you, my name is Siobhan <laughs> um, and I am the founder and creator of Be Free Project. Not sure if any of you ladies ever heard of it, um, I, but I'm a clarity cultivator, also known as a life coach. And what I do is I teach women how to get unstuck how to get clear about what you want so that you can cultivate the life that you deserve to live. And so I'm a motivational speaker. I have a podcast called Girl Be Free that you can listen to on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Google Play. And then I coach women all over the world. So I have a membership site called the Be Free Inner Circle where there's women in there from Nigeria, Canada, London, and all across the U.S. that every day they get coaching from me. And so that's just some of the resources that I offer as a coach. So I want to start off with the scripture. For you formed me in inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. All right? So what is self-care and why is it important? Self-care means that you make you a priority without feeling guilty. Now, as I mentioned, I coach women all over the world, and the number one thing that I hear that comes up is that I feel guilty if I put myself first, or my kids need all these different things, and I feel like I'm neglecting them in some way if I choose to take 10 minutes alone and pray or meditate or um, just take a bath, right? And so I am very intentional in telling women that you don't have to feel guilty about making you a priority. Like, it's okay. And I don't know how that got in our minds that we have to put everybody else before ourselves. But what happens is you end up feeling burned out. You, um, you have these goals that you're not accomplishing because you're giving so much of yourself to everybody else and you're a people pleaser. And then when it's time to show up for yourself, there's nothing left. Can anybody relate? Okay, I'm going to make sure y'all with me. Um, you say yes to yourself first, right? So self-care means you say yes to you first. And that is okay. You're not a bad person if you decide to say, you know what, I want to take care of me. 
So one of the things that I've been practicing is I have a morning routine. And I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning every day. And it's hard. It is not easy to get up that early. But my best friend, who's also speaking today, she, she texts me. We text each other every day at 5 o'clock. And we hold each other accountable. Because we know prayer is important, reading the word. Like, and you have to get up early because there's so much demands on us every given day. So you're going to have to figure out how you can get that time. And I'm going to share some tips with you later. Self-care means you take care of your emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical needs. So oftentimes women, and I know this because I talk to women all the time, but we focus a lot on our outer appearance. So we are real cute. We look cute today, don't we? But then when you, add, I, and I can see through a woman's eyes, and I can see it so clearly when a woman is broken, and you can tell like she's carrying a lot. And so I want us to focus more on doing the inward work, and not to say that we don't get our nails done, because that's important, and you, you got to look cute, but I also want you to consider like how am I taking care of my emotional and mental self? And you don't want to get to that breaking point like I was at, where I had no idea what to do next, right? So you wanna start doing that now. Um, you your needs are not negotiable. So I was at a yoga class this past Sunday, and they were talking about, the presenter was talking about self-care, and she kept emphasizing how self-care is not negotiable. And she just kept saying it over and over again. And she said, you know how you negotiate to get a lower payment on your car or whatever, but your self-care like you, you should not be negotiating. Like, and you should be able to build a tribe of people around you that will support that. And I'll talk about that a little later too. So self-care is more than getting your mani and petties every two weeks. Again, that's cute, we have to be, but it's more than that. It's checking in and saying, am I okay today? How am I feeling emotionally, right? How is my mind, like what? that are going through my head day in and day out. We have 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts in our head per day on average. So if you think about the thoughts that are going through your head day in and day out, you're watching the news, you're scrolling on Facebook, looking at stuff on Instagram, lots of negativity and drama that you're following, you're consuming that. And so when you're consuming that, right, then that's in your mind. And then that's preventing you from having a closer relationship to God because you got all this blockage. Does that make sense? All right. Self-care is also self-love. And sometimes we as women, and I'm guilty, so everything that I'm saying to you, I'm, I do not have it all together. I'm working on this stuff myself. But sometimes we can be our hardest critics. And so we'll self-sabotage or some of the things that we'll say to ourselves when nobody else is around you would be embarrassed if people knew how you talk to yourself. So we have to do more on loving ourselves. This one lady, Nikki Miller, she has like the mirror messages. Anyone heard of her? Yeah, she has the mirror messages where you say these positive affirmations every day in the mirror. And I think she does it for like a certain month, which I think is really good. And then taking care of you in a way that feels good inside and out. And so again, many women don't know what makes them happy. I had one lady, I was vending at an event, and I asked her, I said, well, what makes you happy? And she was like, I don't have anything that makes me happy. And I'm like, all right, let's dig, let's figure out something, you know? She was like, no, I don't have anything. And I said, okay, and then I get another lady who emails me, and I did like a challenge or something on my website, and I said, list 10 things that make you happy. And this lady responded, she was like, I can only come up with one or two things. And so you'll be surprised at how many people are smiling, but they're not really happy inside. And that was me for years, right? Because again, I wore a mask. You, didn't, you wouldn't have known. You'd have been like, oh, she's cute. I see her. But no, I was very sad inside, in church. And so that's why it's so important that you work on building your relationship with Christ, and then you're also taking action and doing the work, OK? And then self-care is knowing what you need, how you need it, and then doing it. So for me, I have to have coffee every single morning. And I'm not ashamed. I know. I, when we woke up in the hotel, I'm like, where do we get the coffee? And is it strong? Like, I need it every single day. But that's the self-care for me, right? I tried to give it up, and it's like, mm, nah. So you have to know what you need and how you need it, and then be able to communicate that to other people. Because one thing that, another, another thing that I know for sure is that we as women, we don't ask for help enough. And I'm guilty. 
I'm like, oh, if I ask her, then she got enough on her, a lot on her plate, and it's too much. So we always consider that other person versus considering ourselves first and what we need. And so even this week, I had to reach out to my tribe, and I'm like, I need this, 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 and right away, they were like, here you go, I got you. And all I had to do is open up my mouth, and this is what, this quote that says, a closed mouth don't get fed. So we as women have to open up and say, you know what, I need help, or I'm not feeling good, or can you come watch my kids for a little, maybe an hour or so, so that I can just be in my room with my door closed, so I can just be, you know, read the word or read different self-care books or different things like that. We have to ask for stuff. So some of the benefits of self-care is that you fill your cup first and you have more to give. So we all know that you cannot pour from an empty cup, right? We've heard it, we've seen it, you see the memes on social, but then how are you filling your cup back up, right? So if you're constantly giving and giving and giving of yourself, what are you doing to pour back into yourself? And that's like the whole, I guess, the gist of this session. Like, I really want you to be intentional about thinking, how am I going to pour back into me? How am I going to practice self-care first and not feel bad about it? And let me say, I have a husband. I've been married for 15 years. I have two children that I homeschool. My grandmother, she'll be 89 on um, this Saturday. So I have a lot, and I'm running a business full time. So I have a lot on my plate, right? And so sometimes we like to say, oh, I'm too busy. We all busy, everybody got stuff to do. But that doesn't mean you should neglect yourself. Benefits of self-care is also you'll deepen your relationship with God and yourself, right? So pastor is talking about the power of prayer, right? So getting up early in the morning or before you go to bed at night, he told us to set the time in our phone so that we're constantly praying. Like that is important. That's the first thing we need to do, right? You'll be less stressed, anxious, and overwhelmed. Anyone suffer with anxiety? I do sometimes, I do, because I'm doing a lot. As I mentioned, I'm like, oh my goodness, how am I gonna get all the things done? And then I just have to you know, open up my mouth and say, you know what, I told my husband, I'm like, I'm gonna be gone from Wednesday to Friday, you gotta hold down the house. And thankfully, he's supportive in that way that it wasn't even a question about it. It's like, okay, let's get it done, because it's, it's teamwork. And you're more mindful of what you need and how to press pause when necessary. So because I've been doing this work for a very long time, and I don't, I don't know, it may not even be that long, seven years, I, it's not even that long, but I know what I need when I need it. So I'll give you an example. About a month or so ago, my husband and I were having a conversation, and he said, you know, you talk about your abandonment issues with your mother a lot and you went through counseling and therapy and you got all of that. He's like, but you never talk about your father. And he was like, I think that's affecting our marriage. And I said, whoa. And I instantly started crying. And he was right. Because I never talk, I, and it, I have a whole, that's a whole nother story, but I never talk about it. And when he said that, because I was triggered and I'm self-aware and I've been doing the self-work, I'm like, oh, he's right. That Monday, so that happened on a Sunday. That Monday, I called my therapist, like, I need to come back. <laughs> I'm like, we need to talk through some stuff. And that's why I'm back in therapy now, to deal with the father issues. Because that stuff hurts. It's really heavy. And I, because I never thought much about it, I just kind of pushed it to the side. But now I know that's something I have to work on. And because I'm a speaker and I'm helping women all over the world, I would never stand on anyone's stage and be a hypocrite. Right? And I'm not going to say, oh, you need to do all the things I'm going to share with you today, and I'm not doing it myself. And so if, if you have been thinking, like, oh, I don't know if I should go to therapy, or just give it a chance, if you need it, because it's not for everybody. But don't be so like, oh, I'm never doing that. It's okay to go to church and go to therapy, too. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. And if you need resources, I can share some with you. There's someone that I refer everyone to, and she's here today vending. So if you need someone, let me know. All right, so many women that I coach struggle with the following, and I'm sure many women in this room as well. And the first one is saying no. So we say yes. Every time somebody asks us, y'all like, every, let me get my phone out. <laughs> every time we ask, someone asks us to do something, we're like, yes. Knowing your calendar is full, knowing you got a lot on your plate, but you're constantly saying yes. And so what happens when you're giving so much of yourself to everyone else, that means you're constantly saying no to yourself. And then how are you going to be able to show up in the best way possible if you're always giving? Now I know there's can be a little bit like that can be tough to just say no, but no is a sentence. And I'm learning to say it more. And 
sometimes like if my relative or act, they'll ask me to do something, let me think about it. And if they love you enough, they're gonna respect that, right? Like, let me just check back with you if you don't feel comfortable with saying no um, right away. And I'm still, like, I can't just tell my granny no, you know? <laughs> but there's certain people I'm like, no. Or if something th something's come my way, it's just like, that's not gonna work for me right now. And being okay with that, and then you don't have to explain yourself afterwards. Because we quick to explain. Oh, I gotta do all this stuff. It's like, no, I just can't do it right now. Women also struggle with helping everyone but themselves, so they're people pleasers, right? Because if I tell her no, then she's gonna be hurt, or she's gonna be upset with me, and then I'm gonna feel guilty, and I should've just said yes in the first place, right? But when you do that, again, you're saying no to yourself. And I have another example, maybe about a couple of weeks ago, I said yes to a speaking opportunity I should've never said yes to. I had tons of things on my plate to do that day. And so I was complaining and complaining about why did I do this, why did I do this, but I said yes. When I knew I should have sat still and said, let me look at everything. Does this really make sense for my schedule right now? And if it doesn't, let me just be okay with telling the person no. It ended up going okay, but now I'm going to make sure that I check with them first and make sure that I'm not putting too much on my plate. Because then that causes stress on the family because everyone has to accommodate to my schedule because I put too much stuff on it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, setting healthy boundaries, and this is huge. People will only do what you allow, right? And people will walk over you and they will take advantage, but if you never put any healthy boundaries in place, then how do they know, right? And so we have to use our voice and we have to speak up and when something is uncomfortable, we have to say, I'm not okay with that. And not being afraid to have those conversations. Because I, I don't like conflict, I avoid confrontation by any means, However, when I was in therapy, because when I was, well, I'll go back, when I was 14, my mother stole my journal and she read it and she punished me for what I had written at the time. And that's when I lost my voice. And then because my eighth grade teacher encouraged me to write, my mother read it and she punished me. I'm like, oh, then it's not okay to share your feelings or get that out because now other people will be hurt. And so that followed me all the way to my adult life in my marriage. So when I got to therapy and we were having these conversations, she says, you have a right to use your voice. She says, long, as long as you're not hurting anyone or trying to be mean or anything like that, like you have a right to speak up for yourself. And when I tell you that was a game changer for me, and it wasn't easy, because again, I don't like confrontation, so I've even had some conflict with really close friends, but we worked through it, and now they respect me in a different way because they know they can't walk over me. You know, so set those boundaries. There's a great book, and I'm probably gonna list a lot of books, but there's a great book called Boundaries by Dr. Henry Cloud. So check that out if that's something that you need to work through. Um, women also struggle with feeling guilty if they do something for themselves. So whether that's treating themsel themselves to something nice, whether that's taking off work, because then now somebody else got a cover for me, I mean, there's many different reasons why women feel guilty if they do something for themselves, and you don't have to struggle with that. Like, you deserve to treat yourself right. Like, you deserve. And I hope that's what you get from this conference, like, over the next couple of days, like, feeling like you are worth it, right? And you are. And you got to tell yourself that, like, every single day. Like, no, we good. We right here. Um, you got to tell yourself that every single day. And I am very big on affirmations, and I'm gonna share some towards the end of this presentation, but I'm really good, I'm really intentional about feeding my mind something positive every day. And because there's so much noise and negativity at any given moment, I have to feed my mind first. And so I recite affirmations like nobody's business. I even created my own deck of affirmation cards that I have with me today if anyone wants to purchase them. And what I do is I set the affirmations in my phone. So every so many hours, a new affirmation will go off. So that way I'm constantly feeding my mind positivity. And that's not something you even have to work to do, right? We're always on our phones. I know I am, right? And so set reminders and start feeding yourself that positive energy. And then also you can put affirmations at your desk at work, right? Write them down in your journal and start reciting them in the morning and retraining the way that you think, okay? And then women struggle with having the time. 
So again, if you, when I was just starting this, my children were very small, so it was really hard to get time by myself. But what I realized is that when, my, when I was working full time, I, had, I was a mother, I was a wife, I was working full time, I was active in church, and I was just giving, and I felt lost. And I kept thinking, I'm like, there has to be more to my life than being a wife and a mother. There has to be. Oprah was talking about purpose. I'm like, I need to know what that is. And at the time, now I know, I was asking for it prematurely because I had to go to therapy first and I had to get healing. And after I went through that process, I am so clear now that my purpose is to be a light and empower others to be free. But I wasn't able to get that when I was broken and I was hurt. Yes, I still have stuff that I'm working through, but I'm very clear on why I'm standing on this stage today. And so I challenge everyone, and I'm gonna talk about that a little later too, like to figure out what's your purpose in life? Because it's bigger than your family, it's bigger than going to work every day, like there is something in you that you're supposed to be doing that God has called you to do. I know God called me to do this. You can't tell me anything different. And I get people from all over the world sending me emails thanking me for sharing something positive because now their life is different. And that's huge, that's more rewarding than money. Because now something that God put in me I'm sharing with someone else, and now the trajectory of their life is going to be different because I decided to show up. That's huge to me, and I don't take that lightly at all. So figure out the time. If it's early in the morning, your lunch break, you go for a walk, you know, before you go to bed, if you start to journal. I also created a journal because that has, it was my therapy before I started going to therapy, and I was just able to just get all of these thoughts out, um, so that I didn't have to keep everything bottled up inside. So why it's okay to put you first without feeling guilty? It's quite simple. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself and God to put you first. And my children though, like when my door is closed, don't knock. It's like I have one of those little hanger things like do not disturb. And they know, they've been trained. And if it's not on there, I'm so mad because I'm like, darn it, I forgot to put it on there and they're knocking. But I'm like, I need my time. First thing in the morning, I homeschool. So when they wake up, it's mommy all day long. That's a lot. So I have to make sure that I take care of me first. And so my morning routine looks like prayer, meditating, right? So praying and speaking to God and then listening to what he's saying to me. I journal. I recite affirmations. I'll read some type of inspirational article or book just so that I'm setting the tone for my day so that as I take care of me first, now I'm able to give to other people. And I'm not mad at the end of the day because I gave everything that I had and now I don't have le anything left for myself, you know? You deserve to make you a priority without question. And you need to write that down. I deserve to make me a priority. You need to recite that every day until you feel it. And sometimes with affirmations, um, it's like, oh, yeah, you can say that, but I don't believe it. You say it, just like scripture, you say it over and over and over again until you believe it in your heart. And then once you get that one down, you move on to the next one. One scripture, that, or excuse me, one affirmation that I say all the time is I am more than good enough and I get better every day. And I have to say that because I, did, I'm, I didn't feel good enough. And because of, again, the dysfunctional relationship that I have with my mother, I didn't feel that great. And so it took a lot of work. So even days like today, I am more than good enough and I get better every day. And I have to pour into myself because nobody else is gonna do it for me and they're not supposed to, right? And then no one will take care of you better than you. I went right into that and didn't know I was there. Um, you are 100% responsible for your life. 100% responsible. What that means is that nobody's gonna come in and save you. You gotta show up for yourself. And as you continue to deepen your relationship with Christ and you're doing this work, like, again, you owe it to yourself and you deserve it. Does, 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 does that make sense? Okay. Y'all like, yeah, I got you. All right. And then lastly, you'll be genuinely happy and have inner joy. I have such a sense of peace. And I remember when I never thought I would be in this place. And I was telling my best friend last night, I'm like, this is so amazing to me that I've been with the church since it started. And I know where I was very broken in the beginning and now to be standing up here teaching what has worked for me, that, that's huge. 
And I already know, like, women will come, every time I get an opportunity to speak, people come up to me and they say, thank you so much for your transparency or being vulnerable or being authentic. Because you talked about therapy, what's your therapist's name? So I can call her, right? Or they'll ask, what's a book that you can refer me to read because I'm feeling like X, Y, and Z. And that lets me, though, lets me know that the work that I'm doing is so important and is so necessary. But I don't have anything different than nobody else. Every day I'm just choosing to show up for Siobhan and building a legacy for my children because they need to see me healthy emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially. Like, they need to see that so then they too can go and pursue their dreams or whatever it is that they desire in life. So putting your needs first means that you start saying no, right, and, t and not saying yes to everyone. And again, if you don't feel comfortable with just saying no and letting that be your complete sentence, say, let me look at my calendar, let me think about it, I'll get back to you. And that's fair. And if the person loves you and they respect you, they'll understand that. And if not, then you know, now I need to set certain boundaries, okay? You discover your purpose in life. Again, that is so, so, so important. So important. And I am so crystal clear, like I said earlier, that I am doing exactly what I call to do, but I understand that everybody don't feel like that. There's a lot of people that I come in contact on a day-to-day, -day, contact with on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm like, I don't know. And I'm like, but are you doing the work? Because they're going through life, like existing and going through the motions, right? And this was my life. I would wake up, you know, when I was working full-time, and I would go to work eight or nine hours a day, drop my kids off at school, pick them up from aftercare. Then when I got home from aftercare, you know, you had to do like dinner, bedtime, homework, all that stuff. And then I was just repeating the same cycle over and over again. And I'm like, come on. And something clicked and I'm like, this ain't right. This is not it. And so I consider getting laid off a blessing because I would have never left my job had they not closed it. And when they closed in October of 2013, I launched Be Free Project in 2014, and I've never worked for anyone else. I've been doing the work. And yes, there's ebbs and flows with entrepreneurship, but I work for myself. And, that is, and I'm doing work that's impacting lives all over the world. And so there's a purpose and there's a calling in you, and I'm gonna challenge every single person to start doing the work. And again, if you have questions, make sure you see me sometime in the next couple of days. I'll make sure that I speak to every single woman so don't hesitate to come up to me and say something, okay? Um, you spend quality time with you. So you define what is self-care for you, like, right? And then you start to practice that in your day-to-day -day life. It can be a few minutes, whatever you have, and I'm gonna give you some things that you can do. But you start spending quality time. You'll be surprised at how many people don't even wanna be alone with themselves. They won't go out to dinner by themselves, they won't go to the movies, like they always need someone to keep them company. And I ain't judging, you know, if that's your thing, fine. But get comfortable with being with you, right? Um, figure out what makes you genuinely happy. So like I challenged the ladies um, that was a part of this challenge, make a list of 20 things that make you happy. And it can be something as simple for me, again, coffee makes me happy. Um, I learned how to do my makeup this year, so that makes me happy that I can do it myself. Um, and there's a lot of things, I can run on and on, but make a list of things that make you happy, and it can be things really small, and then try to incorporate that in your day-to-day -day life. And then create a healthy balance, and I really should have said create a healthy harmony that feels good to you inside and out, because I don't, I, personally, I don't believe in balance. I don't think that everything can be perfect in every area of your life. There's always going to be something. So for me, I've learned to have harmony, and things just have to flow the way that they're supposed to flow. And so if one day my kids got to eat sandwiches that my daughter made because she's 12 for dinner, I'm going to be okay with that. Tomorrow I'll cook, but if that's what they're having, I'm not going to beat myself up over that because I'm, I'm still a good mother even though they have sandwiches for dinner. But sometimes I was putting way too much pressure on myself and trying to be this perfect mother, especially if you look on Pinterest and you see all this, oh my goodness. That's a whole other story, right? Um, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just create harmony in your own life. And then acknowledge that your needs are important. So for me, therapy was very important. It's, it, and it still is. And my husband knows it. Like clockwork on Thursdays or every other Thursday, you know where I'll be at 2.15. And then I'm better because of that. My household is better because of that. So simple ways to incorporate self-care into your busy life. 
So first, pray and meditate, right? Every morning, like Pastor has told us to do, set the alarms in your phone so it goes off and get that reminder of prayer and speaking to God and, you know, just praying over your family and all of that. And then meditating, just sitting, sitting quietly and listening. I also like to use an app called Insight Timer for meditation. So I download that app and I'll use it for about five to 10 minutes a day for guided meditation um, and manifesting what I want to experience in my life. So that's a great app that you can download. Tell yourself I love you. So I was telling the women in the Be Free Inner Circle, my membership site, I'm like, every day I wanna challenge you ladies to tell yourself that you love yourself. Like look in the mirror and say, I love you. Say, I want y'all to do that right now. Tell yourself I love you. Yes, all right, y'all making me happy. Yes, every day. Because sometimes, again, we can be our worst critics. So you have to speak life over yourself. Dump the negative head trash. Seriously. You got to get rid of it. And it's work. I read this book called The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. And he was saying, like, how you have to retrain the way that you think. And... Like I said earlier, there's so many negative thoughts that we have on any given day. So every time that a negative thought comes into your mind, you got to replace it with something positive. So whether you replace it with a scripture, an affirmation, what have you, but you got to switch. And it's work. It is not easy. I'm still doing this myself. And I had to catch myself last week. And I'm like, wait a minute, what are you doing? No, this is not what we're doing today. And then I have... I have a way where I'm, you know, able to do certain things to get myself back to a good place. And again, I have a tribe of women that are in my corner that if I'm having a bad day or a bad moment, I can reach out to them and they will pray over me and all that great stuff. Plant a garden. Now, this is not for me. I do not have a green thumb at all. However, I just purchased some plants and I'm very excited. None of them have died. I've had them about three weeks. They're succulents, so I think I should be pretty good with that. Um, but plant a garden if that's what you're into. And they even have the thing, if you go on Pinterest, they have the things where you can have them in your home. But that's not for me, but for y'all. Um, create a happy list. So again, make a list of things that make you happy and that bring you joy. And I'm challenging every single person, even when you go back to your hotel or your room or wherever tonight, just write down 10 or 20 things that you're happy about. And then see me tomorrow, because I'm going to hold you accountable, and let me know what makes you happy. Get enough sleep. I know, y'all. I know. I know. And my best friend and I were up last night to after midnight. And I'm like, what are we doing? Like, teenagers talking all night long. But everyone else, let's get enough sleep and get enough rest because our body needs it. And there's even, I know on the iPhone, you can set it where I need to go to bed at a certain time. And so it'll tell you how many hours that you need based on um, the time that you put in your phone. So I know for me, seven hours is pretty good. Have I been getting that every day? No. But after the conference, I'm going to be back on track. Spend time in nature. Um, so going for a walk is really good. Um, even as the weather is changing here in Ohio, I know it's like yucky. But still getting outside and being just hearing like if it's raining or just walking and hearing the birds and the trees, like that's important. And it will do something to your inner spirit just being connected. Practice gratitude daily. So every day I like to write down three to five things that I'm grateful for. And it changes every day. Because I know things can get monotonous and you start saying every single day, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful. For, okay, okay, I get that. But what are some other things that you're grateful for? And when you focus on like the things that you're grateful for, when you're having a bad moment, go back to that list. And it can be the smallest thing, right? Like I'm thankful and very grateful that I have an opportunity to stand on this stage and share the things that have been working for me and hoping that at least one person's life will be changed. I'm very grateful for that, right? So think about small little things every day that you're grateful for. And I would just say keep a gratitude journal and write those things down. Unplug from social media. Anyone guilty of scrolling a lot? Me? Um, I did this last year, and I'm about to do it again, but last year, right after Thanksgiving, I was off of social media until the beginning of the year. And when I tell you I had so much clarity afterwards, my business shifted because I didn't, my message and who I needed to reach and talk to and what they needed to hear, like everything transformed because I unplugged and I wasn't so busy looking at what everybody else was doing. And I run my business full-time online, so it's really hard to do that. 
But I'm doing it again because I understand, like, I don't need social media, but I think sometimes we convince ourselves, like, oh, I got to be on, like, all the time. And that's not the case. So even in, a, like, I believe the second week of November, I'll be unplugging until the beginning of the year because I'm looking to take my business to the next level. And I need God to speak because this is not even about me. It's about how am I serving, right? And so I need to unplug and just pull back so that I can hear. So I challenge, and if you can't do that period of time, I know that's a lot. But what if you did a day? Maybe you took the afternoon not looking at it. Maybe you took the weekend off. And then spending that time practicing self-care and everything that I'm sharing today. Cook your favorite meal. So my best friend told me, and I'm talking about her a lot today. I'm going to have to tell her. Um, but she told me about Blue Apron. Have you heard? They send the food to your house. And I'm like, it was, I had two meals. What was that, last week? Best ever. It was so good. And it was so convenient because everything that you needed was right in the box. And I just did it to get the two free meals or whatever. So my son was like, what is our blue apron? And I'm like, we're not getting it. That's, it's an investment if you choose to do that. But cook your favorite meal, something delicious that you enjoy. Ladies, we have to get our annual checkups. That goes without saying. So if you haven't had like your annual, make sure you're getting that before the end of the year because we want to be healthy physically as well as spiritually and everything else. Um, do something creative. So whether that's line dancing, if you enjoy doing that, painting, something artistic, something that you can use your hands and like get in a zone where you're doing something that you really enjoy. And you know what that is for yourself. So for me, I enjoy coloring. So I have this really cute coloring book and I bought me some fancy markers. And then I also like bullet journaling. And so I started doing that just so I can take a break from the business stuff and have something as an outlet to do more creative. So figure out what that is for you. Spend time with loved ones. And it's something, and I mean like family and friends and all of that. Like I have such a good time when I'm with my best friends. And then even with my grandmother. So we'll be celebrating, like I said earlier, her 89th birthday on Saturday. And so I'm really looking forward to just being around them and again, taking a break from all this stuff and having that, those conversations that are enriching, right? Get active. Did anyone go to workout class this morning? I didn't, I didn't. I wanted to, I did. <laughs> I know, and I saw the video, I'm like, ooh, I need to be in there, but I'm like, maybe tomorrow. Hold me accountable for tomorrow. But get active, physical, right? So maybe in, if you don't feel as comfortable, like even making small little changes, right? So taking the stairs instead of the elevator, or maybe getting a Fitbit or Apple Watch or whatever and tracking your calories and doing more walking on your lunch break. Anything to get your blood flowing and moving your body is really, really important for us. I've been talking about therapy the whole time. Um, there's a great website that you can check out called Therapy for Black Girls. Great, she has a podcast. Her name is Dr. Joyce, she, she's in Atlanta. And then she created this directory. So you can go to her website, and if you just put in your zip code, it'll tell you the therapist in your area. It's amazing, and one of the therapists on her site is actually here today. So check that out. Drink more water. So I have an app that I'm using where every time I drink so many ounces of water, I'm keeping track of it because I haven't been doing a good job. So I'm trying to be more mindful of drinking more water, especially because I love coffee, so I need to balance it out, you know? Practice journaling. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, journaling, it was my therapy before I started going to therapy. My eighth grade teacher, Miss Gilmore, she gave me my first journal when I was 14. And a few, actually, I think last week we connected on Facebook, and I was so excited, because I'm like, I talk about you all the time. Um, but journaling has just been so therapeutic for me, and I even created my own journal called the Free Your Mind Journal, because women would ask me, like, what did you do? Like, I hear you speak, and you're saying all these things, but what actually did you do to change your life? And so I had to ask myself very specific questions, right, that... I had, and not just asked myself the questions, but then started taking action on what I wrote. So because women kept asking me, and at times maybe they weren't ready for the investment in coaching one-on-one, -on -one, so I created the journal. It has 40 journal prompts. So this way, you don't have to think about what to write. All you gotta do is answer the prompts. And not just answer them, but then do something afterwards. So there was this one lady, she told me that she's been through the journal like five times. And she says every time she'll put a different date on it to see if her answers or her responses changed. So I thought that that was really powerful and that she keeps going through it. And she said how much it helped her. There's also coloring pages in it, because I like to color. 
There's affirmations, and then there's additional writing exercises, to, again, to help you free your mind. So I'm a vendor today, so if y'all want to see me, make sure you stop by my table. Spend a long time with God and reading your word. That goes without saying is very, very, very important, okay? Discover your purpose. We're going to do that, right? We're going to start thinking about what am I here to do outside of my family, outside of my job? What have I been called on earth to do? Because there is a purpose in you, and you matter. And no matter what is happening in the world, like there's a reason that you're here. And when you don't discover your purpose and you don't show up for yourself, your people are watching, and they're inspired by you, whether you know it or not, whether they ever say anything. And so when you don't show up and figure out what you're supposed to be doing, you're holding somebody else back, and they're holding somebody else back. And it's like a trickle-down effect. Right? So I know that if I don't show up, somebody that need to hear me, they're not going to be able to show up in their life because God put something in me that they were supposed to hear. And if I'm operating in fear or I'm procrastinating or putting things off, now that's somebody else that's not able to walk in their purpose or do the work that I talk about. Does that make sense? I'm reading more books. So I read a lot. I'm, I probably got like five or six books that I'm reading and I'm like, oh, so much. But read. Do some, read books that's going to stimulate you mentally. I read a lot of business books, a lot of self-help. Even on my website, I have a whole list of books that I read or recommend that you read. So if you need it, I gave you two, I believe, today already. Um, but check them out, and if you need other referrals, just let me know. But read more. And that can be, so let's just say you want to finish a book in a month. Divide the pages by how many days are in a month, right? And that's how many pages you'll read each day. So that's how you'll get it done. And if you're someone that likes audio books, there's an app called Libby. L-I-B-B-Y, and it's through the library, so you can listen to free audiobooks. There's another one called um, Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A. So you can listen to books, and then you can also read e-books, and they're both free through the library. Okay? So here's some affirmations and scriptures, so you probably want to take out your phone so that you can snap a picture of it so that you can use them later. The first one, rather it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. 1 Peter 3 and 4. So I mentioned that earlier, like focusing on doing the inner work. Yes, make sure you're looking good, but also don't forget about your inner spirit because that's more important than your outer beauty. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will, Romans 12 and 2. So I talked a lot about mindset, and you really got to work on shifting that. And again, it's not going to be easy, but if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? But you came to this conference to give something. And so you're going to challenge yourself to shift the way that you think so that you can show up in a bigger way, so that your 2019 will be much better than your 2018. And I say this to women all the time. So what's today's date? What is today? I don't know. Thank you. November 1st. November, November 1st, 2018. November 1st, 2019, you want your life to look different. I want my life to look different, right? And so in order for a shift to happen, that means you got to do something. Because if you repeat the same behaviors that you're doing right now, you're going to get the same results, right? And you need someone to hold you accountable like myself because I, I understand that it's not easy to do on your own. Snap a picture of this too. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I trust God at all times. And these are just affirmations and scriptures that you can recite over and over and over again. I am not alone. God is with me always. Always. I am calm and peaceful. God's peace fills me up. I will lack nothing because God will supply all of my needs according to his riches. There is no lack, none. And I think sometimes we focus on that, and so we got to do all this other stuff, but no. We got to trust God more. All right, here's some writing prompts. You're going to snap a picture of this, too. So when you get your journal, either from me or you get you a notebook or something like that, I want you to take time and answer these questions for yourself. So you can snap a picture of that. Um, how will you start to practice self-care? And depending on the time, we may go back to this, and I'll ask some questions in the audience about this. But what do you love most about your life? So I personally love that I get to do what I love every single day. Every day I get to do what I love. 
and I get to see my children because that was very important to me. Um, I didn't like the feeling of someone else getting more of their time every day than me. And that was just a personal thing between my husband and I. And so now I get to see them every day and I'm able to pour into them what I want them to know and what I believe is important. It's not an easy task to homeschool, but it's working for us. What limited beliefs are you willing to let go of in order to make you a priority? So for me, a limited belief that I'm letting go of is that a poverty mindset. Because my grandmother and family and even my husband's side of the family, there's this thought process that nobody got money. And so they repeat that language over and over again, and then you're getting it in your head. And so then you'll find yourself reciting, or I'm broke. No, even my daughter had the nerve to say that the other day. I said, no, no, no. No, we're not speaking that, because when you say that out loud, you're putting that out there, and so that's what you're going to attract, and that's not the mindset of abundance. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, yeah, okay. That's good. <laughs> what do you believe you deserve and why? So I deserve to be happy. I deserve to walk in my purpose. I deserve to do what I love, right? That's important, and I deserve it. Why do I important? Because I'm a child of God. Why not me? Why should everybody else be living out their dreams and not me? They're, nobody is no different from you. We're all putting on our pants the same way, right? So why not? Why not you? And then I practice self-care because I want to feel, and you fill in the blank. I want to feel happy. I want to leave a legacy for my children that's bigger than me, that my, what I teach them, what I'm sharing with them, my business be free project, like I'll, all of that will outlive me. That's very important. All right, putting self-care into action. Start your day in prayer and reading scripture to set your mind on things of God. I've said that multiple times. Asking God for wisdom about how you can proactively reduce non-essential things in your life. The key word, non-essential, non -essential, so that you can make space for restorative, intentional habits that serve you well. Set healthy boundaries and relationships, and don't be afraid to reconcile with someone you've had conflict with. So my mother, going back to her, um, I reached out to her and I told her I forgive her. And um, the reason that I had to do that, because two people came up to me in two different instances that didn't even know each other, and they said, if something happened to her today, how would you feel? And I used to have a very cold heart. I'm like, I'm good. If something happens, I'm okay, whatever. But then God had to check me because I wasn't okay. But that was a defense mechanism for me. And so when two different people said that to me, I'm like, I got to do something with that. And so I called her, and we were on the phone all of two to three minutes. And I said, you know what? I'm not mad. I said, you did the best you could with what you knew. And you are going through some things, and I'm totally okay with that. And the conversation was very short. But I didn't call her to get anything back. I did that for me. So that when I talk to other women about forgiving people that have hurt you or that have wronged you, I'm speaking from experience because experience I did it myself. And even I see her to this day, and I'm like, we're good. It's just, that's just the nature of our relationship. But it took a lot of healing to get to that place. And even to be able to stand on this stage and say it out loud without crying, that's huge for me. Add you to your calendar. So let's put some self-care practices in your calendar and nobody can interfere with that time. So if your self-care time is from 9 to 10 or what have you, that means if somebody call you and ask you to do something that's not an emergency, they don't get on that, your calendar. And you can even print out a calendar, put it on your refrigerator, so everyone knows that every third Saturday, mommy is hanging with her friends. And so you start to put that in your life so then people get accustomed to it. So then you're not burned out and feeling like there's never any time for yourself. Speak to yourself with love and embrace your journey. Again, I've said this many times today, it's not going to be easy. But what I understand is that there's always going to be something that I'm working on, and I have to embrace the journey that I'm on. And my journey looks different from yours, from yours, from yours, and that's okay. And I'm learning to give myself more grace and not putting too much pressure on myself to do all of the things but I do the best that I can every single day and then be okay with that. And then this is something I just thought of last week, to create a self-care mood board. So very similar to a vision board, but what are some self-care practices that you want to do? So for me, my dream trip is to go to Bali. I can't wait. And I'm, I think about it all the time. Like, And when I go, I want to be there for at least two weeks. 
And so I think about that all the time. So that's on my vision board. But you can also create a self-care board. Some of the things that you like to do to practice self-care so that you can see it, so that when you do have that time to yourself, you, you don't have to figure out, oh, what am I going to do today? Oh, no, this is on my board. I'm going to do this. Okay? Or you can also create a self-care list. So I use an app called Wonderless, W-U-N-D-E-R list. And I keep a list of ways that I want to celebrate myself. And small little things, but I just keep a running list. So that way, when it's time for me to practice self-care, I can pull something off that list and feel good about the wins that I have. So I got to add something, or I got to do something after this event for myself. Nice. All right, so now I want to talk to you about the Be Free Inner Circle, and then we'll have Q&A. So as I mentioned earlier, I have a membership site with women all over the world that I hold them accountable. I coach them. We have a book club. There's resources. They get downloads, and they are showing up for one another. And the beautiful thing about that is that they don't have to figure out how to do it on their own. They have a tribe of women that are on a journey to be free and live their best life. So if you're interested in learning more about the services that I offer or what have you, um, definitely make sure you see me today. This membership site is $19.99 a month, but it's an amazing way to stay connected with me and people who are on a similar journey that can hold you accountable. Here's a couple of testimonies from some of the ladies that are in the group. Jeanette says, and she's one of my favorites, she says, from changing my mindset and finding the tools needed to consistently grow and evolve, Siobhan's approach to finding what being free means to you and cultivating that is like none other. And then Emily says, Be Free Project has helped me to push towards my goals and zero in on what I wanted to accomplish. I feel so much further than I did two years ago when first connecting with Siobhan. The sense of community and being around like-minded women inspired me to do more. I'm sorry, her name is Linda. So I want to give everyone a free gift because I like to give away things. So I'm going to give you a free download of my workbook, Get Unstuck. So all you have to do right now is pull out your phones. Just do that. And then we'll have time for Q&A. Am I good on time? I don't know. Yes, I am. Oh, good, thank you. So if you text 66866, and you just have to type Be Free Project all together. It's going to say, what's your name and email address? Yeah, snap a picture, too. You can snap a picture of it if that's easier. And once you put your name and email address in there, I'm going to send you a free workbook called Get Unstuck. And it's going to teach you how to figure out your purpose how to live life and not exist, how do you push past your fears, and what does it mean to be genuinely happy. So as long as you text Be Free Project to that number, or, yeah, y'all know what I mean, um, and your name and email address, I'll get that to you, okay? All right, so we have time for Q&A. How many minutes do I have, anyone? Okay, good, that's good stuff. Um, so does anyone have any questions, or what's your key takeaway? I'm here, so pick my brain, even though I don't really like that phrase, but yes, the journals are $20, and then the affirmation cards are $10. So you can get them from me here, or I also have a vendor's table. Anyone else? So I will share about this one lady, Miss Denise, while I'm, if you have any questions, you can think about them. Um, we were in New Orleans a couple of weeks ago, or about a month or so ago. And she has been with, she actually attends the Word Church, and she is one of my biggest supporters. And we are sitting at, and she does everything. She buys everything. She comes to all of my events. She's in the Be Free Inner Circle. She does it all. And I'm like, so we were sitting at the pool at a self-care retreat about a month or so ago. And I said, you know, why, what do you feel connected to about Be Free Project? Like, what is it? Because she's just so, and she even volunteers for me. So amazing. And she says, you know, you changed my life. And so I'm sitting here, and I'm like, what? And she's like, you changed my life. And so I'm holding back tears, because I'm like, that's very powerful for someone to say, you changed your life. And she said, I was very, before I met you about two years ago, I was very stressed out of my job. And her husband pulled her off of her job because she was so stressed. She was forced into retirement. And she says, I've been following everything that you said. She said, I'm now accomplishing goals. I'm doing all these different things. And she said, I'm now living my best life in my 60s than any other period of my life because I met you. 
And I'm like, don't make me cry, Miss Denise. And so I talk about her all the time because I'm like, wow. And she was like, well, where were you 20 years ago? And I'm like, I was only like 17 or 18 years old. But I'm like, I'm so glad that we're connected now because now her life is so different. She has this glow, and she talks about her husband and how much she loves him, and she lights up. If anyone knows Miss Denise, y'all know she lights up when she talks about her husband, and she has so much joy. And so to be a part of someone else's journey, like, that's huge. It's huge. So tell me, what was your key takeaway today? I'm looking right here. So you like, you caught on me? Yes. So what's one thing you're going to do? Yes, yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's good. Absolutely. And I'm holding you accountable. What's your name? Leela. I'm holding you accountable, Leela. Yeah. And then tell me, what, and you, you like, you nod your head too. <laughs> what's your key takeaway from today? A, a self-care move board. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You make it. I love it. You're making me so proud. Thank you. Um, and I love that. I created my 2019 vision board, and I have it right above my desk. And I was very intentional about the things that I put on my board. Um, and so if I couldn't find it in a magazine, I would Google exactly what I wanted. So then that way it's very specific and what's on that board is what I'm trying to attract in my life. So I want an Audi SUV. So I couldn't find it in a magazine, so I printed it out. And now I see Audis all the time because I put it on my vision and it's coming to me. And I told my best friend, I'm like, when I get it, I want it paid in full. Somebody's going to gift it to me. And I just keep saying it and I, it's going to happen. I believe it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I love it. That's good. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And a little bit every day, right? Because I think sometimes we feel like we have to do all of the things. So small steps every day so you're not putting too much on your plate. And then it's more doable versus feeling like I have to do all the stuff. So every day a little bit of something. Who else? Your key takeaway. I can't see. Yes. Oh, thank you. I'm going to step down so I can see. Is that okay with the camera? Because I can't see with the lighting. Okay. Okay. Yes. too hard on yourself. You can only do so much. And then what I tell clients all the time is that every day you get a fresh start. So whatever happened yesterday, the Popeyes you ate yesterday, okay. That was my fun. Today is a new day. And you keep saying that every single day until you build these new habits until it becomes second nature. Don't be too hard on yourself. We all make mistakes. I have not worked out in a very long time. And my best friend the other day while I was um, working, she was like, just go take a walk. And I'm like, you know what? I am going to take a walk. And it was that little bitty thing, and I felt good about that. So just being easy on yourself and giving yourself grace and know that you can only do so much in a day, and every day you get a fresh start. Is that, is that good? Okay. Who else? Yes. Oh, yay. The questions are coming. Should I pass the mic? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. Stand up so I can hear you. Yes. Thank you.
Hi. Hi. Um, can you speak a little bit about developing a, or having a tribe and just having safe people who have your back when needed? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. So I have best friends that have been in my life. We have been best friends for 24 years, and they are more like sisters to me. However, when I launched Be Free Project in February of 2014, I was very lonely because they're not entrepreneurs. Like, they have jobs that they go to. And so I started saying, like, I need more women in my life that are doing similar work that I could talk to and that can encourage me. And so I was a part of a conference called Journey to Queendom about two years ago. And there was a, um, women, it was like 12 ambassadors or speakers. Every single woman, was, they matched my energy. And we're still close to this day. And so now we have like a thread that we text. I have mastermind groups, and we text each other on any given day to keep encouraging one another. Um, also, I went to a conference, and I met my accountability partner who lives in Florida. So we text every day. So they don't necessarily have to be in the same space. You can meet people online. Um, I met someone, well, someone, she actually, when I started Be Free Project, she reached out to me, and she was like, can I have your number? Or she said, do you have an iPhone? And I'm like, yeah, I got an iPhone. I never met her a day in my life. And she said, can I message you sometimes? And I'm like, that sounds weird. You know, I'm not in the online. I don't know. I, it was just so new to me. And so I ended up giving her my number. She's now my mentor. We talk all the time. And I asked her, I said, well, what made you reach out? She was like, I, um, she was like, I just want to see you win. And she's never asked me for anything. She probably gave me more stuff than she had to, right? Like, just she'll see me post certain things. And she was like, tweak that so that you can reach this type of woman. So she's been very, very supportive. So to go back to your question, um, it's all about the energy that you put out. And start telling God, I want to attract more women who match my energy, who can be supportive. And you can build friendships as an adult. You know, I know it's easy to do when you kids, like everybody your best friend. But you can do it, when, you know, when you're an adult. Just start cultivating those relationships and be intentional about what you want so that way more and more women who are in alignment with what you want, you'll start to attract. And this is the perfect space to do that. Everybody's here for the same reason, right? So make sure that you start connecting with women, speaking, saying hi, compliment her, and maybe you can exchange social media, maybe go out to lunch, you know, something like that. Does that help? Okay. Are we good? Is that? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I just am thankful that you uh, kind of dispelled the myth of having to be a superwoman. Oh, yes. I think that in society, we all think we've got to be a super mom, a super PTA mom, a super mom to our kids, and we got to take care of our parents. And I just appreciate you dispelling kind of that myth about being all of those and taking some time for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Is that the last question? Um, one more. One more? Okay. One more question. I have to learn how to, um, how to, if I say I'm going to do the self-care, to actually do it, mm -hmm. especially like the sit and do nothing. If I'm going to sit and do nothing, I'm going to sit and do nothing, including in my mind. Because mm. if I start thinking, okay, I'm sitting and do nothing, but I could be doing laundry right now. I could be doing the dishes right now. I could change the sheets right now. <laughs> my kids' toys are everywhere. I could pull them out while they're not at home and they're at school. And so then you want to get up to do it. And it's like, you don't have to. Yeah. They'll still be there tomorrow. Absolutely. They're going to mess them up when yes. I take them out anyway. Mm -hmm. So just sit and do nothing. Like, sit down, for yes. real. So to actually do some of the things on the list and know how to do them. Yes. And you can do it as just it's just a mind thing absolutely because we as women we're just so used to doing doing and doing for other people yes. and we're and we're still empty we're yes. not pouring into ourselves yes that's so true thank you for sharing that and i know we all can relate to that um but yeah you're right it'll be there tomorrow and then get people in there to help you like let the kids pick up their stuff they'll be okay well thank you thank you thank you so much this was wonderful I, appre I appreciate all of the feedback, the questions, the engagement. Um, I'm here for the next couple of days, so make sure you stop me and say hi. Let me know if you have questions. Um, you can get the Free Your Mind journal, become a part of the Be Free Inner Circle, or get the affirmation cards from me today. Thank you.
thank you.